So welcome to Founder Beam. And today we have an interesting guest, BotSync CEO, Rahul, welcome. Hi, Anika, pleasure to be here. Thank you. So we wanted to have a little discussion about BotSync. And if you could tell just in three sentences, what is BotSync? All right, so as a company, what BotSync does is we build automation solutions to help any facility, be it a factory or a warehouse, automate their internal logistic operations, which is basically moving things around in days instead of months or years. So as a company, that's what we do, starting with Southeast Asia and India, with the global, but the goal is to go global eventually. It has been a very challenging time, uh, like last year, now it's going on. How has it impacted uh, your activities? All right, so maybe I'll start with the, I think the, the biggest thing which happened last last two years, the onset of COVID-19 itself. Um, uh, I think it was a, it's, it's like a coin, it has two sides for us. On one end, companies started appreciating the, the need for automation a lot more closely than before. As a result of both travel restrictions, the restrictions of the number of people that can work in any facility, automation became something that moved from being a concept or being a demonstration equipment to actually being something mission critical. Uh, the company is struggling to meet the KPIs at the end of any given month. So what that did is for companies like us, that started translating in terms of how quickly customers responded. For us personally, people who were engaged on a more POC pilot demonstration perspective started reverting back to us from a more serious implementation point of view. So that's something which really turned the tides for us, really helped us commercialize and, and fortunately time, was in time or aligned with our commercialization strategy. Uh, on the other side, like any other company in the space of manufacturing, we also have quite an extensive supply chain uh, spread globally. We have vendors from Europe, from US, uh, from Taiwan, China, India. Uh, onto the COVID, what they meant for us is our supply chain was also disrupted, but at the same time, it helped us evolve as a company, creating redundancies in the entire supply chain process. So we have multiple contingency vendors across the globe now. A lot of them in India as well, which you can switch to whenever lead times for any specific vendor, it spans too much. So first six months, we were essentially creating this redundancies across the entire supply chain to mitigate the impact to, in order to keep delivering to customers what this increased demand was giving, creating for us. So yeah, I think on both sides, great. Uh, on both sides, we had impact, positive note, supply inc demand increase for the products that we make. On the other side, we had to innovate, grow as a company to be able to handle the supply chain disruption, which we were also facing. So basically the industry trends continue supporting you, which means there will be more and more need for automatization, for digitalization, for cost-efficient solutions. And uh, we can see this year as well, probably. Absolutely. So I think more and more uh, what people are starting to appreciate is that the digital digitization of supply chain is crucial. It's not just to see what is happening today. It's actually to start predicting what can happen at any point in time and then make decisions on how to respond to that across the entire supply chain for any company for that matter. So for us, that really drives this. Automation kind of fits into this overview of, of a trend. Automating a facility indirectly means you're also digitizing your entire facility's operations. And what that gives an insight is at the top, management has at any point in time, visibility of what is happening across the factory floor, across the warehouse floor, and they can tie this into better predictive analytics in terms of how to compensate for any supply chain shops. So this visibility is what automation is indirectly delivering. And I think that that is what is uh, kind of contributing towards growth and automation. So that's the first trend, digitization in itself. Uh, secondly, it's just that people are starting to expect a lot more faster supply chain in general. Uh, patients has dropped to the point that people are expecting same day delivery to be the norm. And I think this is going to be the case moving forward everywhere in the world. And it's interesting to note that beyond a certain volume of items being moved, a, a manual supply chain really can't handle this. With ever more increasing e-commerce, there are smaller parts being delivered, there's more frequency of parts being delivered. So as that demand grows for any facility, there's a bottleneck with what a manual facility can deliver, and only automation can really help beyond that scale. So as companies are moving more online, it's inevitable that at one point in time, every facility is going to be automated or nearly fully automated with people only looking at the overview of the facility and all these mundane tasks being fully automated. So this 
is tying in with e-commerce growth in Southeast Asia and India. It has happened a lot more in Europe, North America. It's happening a lot more, pre- becoming a lot more prevalent now in Southeast Asia and India. So I think that's what the trend has been as well, which is driving our adoption in this market. I think these are the two major global trends, really pus- pushing this growth and automation globally. So how did you come to this idea? What background do you have founders have? You have probably been around for some time in logistics. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my co-founders and I come from a robotics research background. Uh, so we've been actually as a team, I know the three of them for almost eight years, and we've been working on robotics since a very early day. So we started working with drones, manipulators for outdoor logistics. And then we started getting into self-driving cars for urban mobility. So we did a good two years of research in developing technology for self-driving cars before really getting into the specific niche of robotics uh, in logistics. So I think maybe a lot of people do ask me, uh, it's not the most exciting space to be building robotics for, but that also presents a good vision we can build out. So when I go out into the market today, you have these Facilities run by Dematic, Schaefer, highly automated. It looks amazing, but at the same time, building a facility like that takes a good 15, 20 million dollars of investment, which unfortunately is not really available to a lot of facilities apart from the top tier facilities. So in my mind, when I was doing research on robotics, what I was really looking forward to is can we build that same level of automation at a much more lower affordability range? making it easier for facilities to move from zero in automation to fully automated without having to spend this 15 to $20 million investment. So during the years of research, when we were working in self-driving cars, we were quite excited to see, can we build something like this, take what we have done in drones, self-driving cars, package this in a solution which can fit in these facilities. And that's a vision we're chasing, basically getting that system out where any facility can move from zero automation to fully automation in weeks or days without spending millions of dollars to get to that get to that eventual point. So yeah, so that's kind of the background and kind of what we're building towards. And you already have quite significant customers. Yeah. Just to name a few, maybe you could give examples of who they are and how they use your solutions. Yeah, so uh, I think maybe I can give a more segment-wise distribution. Um, so we work with automotive companies uh, based in Thailand, global companies. We work with automotive companies based in India. So one of the markets which has really taken off for us, but specifically in the last last few months, has last last year has been the automotive industry. So we work with auto, automotive companies, uh, I think like Ford and TBS, to name a few, uh, to help them automate the movement of heavy materials inside the facilities. What we help them do is automate the interlogistics of production. So instead of moving items from one line to another to assemb- for the assembly process and production process, which is now done by forklifts of people, we automate the entire line to make it a lot more, a lot more, a lot more no unmanned than it is today. So that has been the one biggest sector which has really taken off for us. The second one has been a lot of electronics. Similar process, we move smaller materials. In the automotive sector, we move heavy materials. We can go up to two tons. Electronics, we move between 300 to about one ton in terms of weight. Same process, just that we're moving smaller items. So these have been, been the two sectors which really took off. They have high throughput requirements, continuous operations throughout the day. It's an ideal fit for automation. And that's going to be one of our, some of our key focus areas moving forward as well. The third one, which is, is also a very promising sector is contract logistics. We work with 3PL firms, uh, nowadays with e-commerce firms, kind of building out there uh, order fulfillment processes. So whenever they need to ship out an item or receive an item from one of their vendors, right now it's very forklift driven, manually, 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 manually operated. So one of the third process we target is that specific market. And within that, we work with companies like Polori Logistics to name uh, one of the biggest ones we're working with today. And you plan also regional expansion. You see lots of opportunities in your region still. We do. Uh, the, the market is, has endless potential, has, has a very large potential, especially because the market is just starting to formulate in this part of the world. Uh, so for the next year and a half, our primary markets are going to be India, Singapore, Thailand, uh, and Malaysia. And we'll eventually start expanding into Philippines, Vietnam, it's Indonesia as additional markets to capture. 
the reason we started capturing Malaysia, Thailand, and, and India is that a lot of manufacturing companies operate in these markets. So considering that that, that is our initial go-to market, those are going to be the main ones we target first. Uh, but beyond that, our products are designed to be very, very easily implemented. That's one of the core values we deliver. So it means that it can be deployed anywhere without having a, a, a vendor in charge. We can ship out products to any part of the world and customers can deploy this. Uh, so considering this, the next year and a half, we're going to focus on this market, creating a very efficient support network for our customers to feel comfortable switching to automation. But beyond that, we are targeting expanding into Europe, US, Japan, Korea, Australia, and Middle East. Those are going to be a series of expansion plans to target new geographies. And this is why you're fundraising, right? Correct. So the reason why we're fundraising now is to start building that commercial engine. The last year, we built the product engine, getting the product off the ground, deployed the facilities, getting the early customers on board. So right now, the main focus of the current fundraise is to build a commercial part of the company out. It has been founder-led so far. We're going to start expanding our teams to be running this a lot more efficiently to essentially prepare for the much larger expansion uh, 12 to 18 months down the line with a series of fundraise. You're fundraising up to half a million and there is still uh, over a week to go. So what would it be your message to the investor just in a few sentences? Absolutely. So I think automation is one of the biggest sectors moving forward considering the fact that everyone wants everything digitized. It's only a matter of time before every facility in the world becomes automated. So for us, where we are now is basically step one of our long-term objective, basically building our one part of automation. What we're getting towards in five years time is that we want to be able to take any facility, automate it into a fully 90% automated facility in a couple of weeks, and giving customers or the user of the facility an ability to 3x, 4x and margins in that quick time span. So that is a vision we're building towards and we basically need to step one and I think this is just gonna get even larger moving forward. Thank you, truly much Raul and wish you luck. I appreciate it, Annika. Pleasure talking to you.